Hello everyone, I am Nivita Jena from Ambika Prasad Research Foundation. Welcome to all of you to our channel, Biodiversity and Conservation. So today in previous part, we have discussed about the density dependent population regulation. And in this part, we are going to discuss about the density independent population regulation. So let's start. So density independent factors determine the potential level which populations may attain and are basically physical in nature. They do not normally produce stabilization since they vary in intensity largely independently the size of population or community. All factors taken together are commonly considered to constitute the environmental resistance, a convenient if not entirely accurate term. It includes variations in space or cover, favorable weather and food which occur independently of population densities and may cause drastic changes in the abundance of animals. So uh, the factor is uh, depends on different type. So let's discuss about the space or cover. The most basic requirement an organism has is space. The amount of solid surface available also determines the population density reached by sessile rotifiers. So variations in water level of a stream affect the availability of suitable spawning areas for fish and consequently their abundance. A drought may dry up a marsh, making it unsuitable for muskrats and waterfowl. The space is suitable for many animals only if it provides adequate cover, usually vegetation, a shelter from adverse weather and refuse from enemies. The same amount of space but without cover will induce much fighting and mortality among meadow walls, which otherwise would occupy it peacefully. Differences among species in their uh, relative demands for space, food and shelter affect the population levels that they attain. Species of small body size require less space than those of large size. In similar fashion, species that get along in small territories will be more numerous than those requiring large territories.
Then coming to the next factor, which is weather and climate. There are limits of tolerance to various climatic factors beyond which organisms cannot survive and these limits vary with the species. A severe winter fridge may kill all but a few hardy individuals regardless of the size of the original population. Likewise, reproduction and growth take place more effectively under some climatic conditions than others and affect the population level attained. Populations subjected to intolerable weather conditions commonly fluctuate violently and erratically. So both the um, annual variations in climate and the certain more rapid changes in weather can have regulating effect on populations. How much a population is affected depends very much on the lifespan of the species concerned. Then the next factor is food and water. So evidence is extensive that the available food sets an upper limit to the size of populations when other conditions are favorable. This principle was known to Thomas R. Malthus back in 1798 and influenced Charles Darwin in his development of the theory of evolution. The supply of food varies from place to place because of substratum, type of vegetation, fertility of soil, climate, and other factors. In fact, the lack of sufficient food to maximize reproductive potential may be the most important regulator of population size of animals. If food is rare, animals have to spend considerable time finding it. And if it is of poor nutrient quality, then there may not be enough time available to eat a sufficient amount. Many observations show that when food is rare or of poor quality, animals reproduce less successfully than when food is abundant. Then natural disasters is also uh, one of the factors uh, responsible for density independent population regulation. So disasters are uncommon and unpredictable events which can occur in an area of the world. Such events include fires, floods, hurricanes, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, meteor impacts and the like. The effects of disaster on populations are considerable. These events do not regulate populations in a stable way like other factors. A natural disaster may wipe out many species in the vicinity of the disaster. New populations may then be established by immigrants from neighboring populations. In many cases, new species colonize the devastated area and it may take some time before the populations of the original species reinvade the site. <laughs>